everyone. My name is Vitor and I'm a PhD student from Okihio in Brazil. And today I'm here to present the SCP, which is an infrastructure for the centralized semantic complex event processing. The motivation of this work is to address requirements that use cases like this one here has. Um, they, they are use cases that you have to combine data from the stream with data from break, from breakdown knowledge bases. Uh, for example, here in the stock market trends, a stock broker uh, may want to know more and not only the price of a stock, but also if the company have factors in Europe or if the company have more than 10,000 employees. So this type of query can only be solved by accessing and combining background knowledge with data on the stream. So uh, there is semantic CP. Uh, semantic CP is a form of event stream processing that attempts to combine the inference capabilities of RDF uh, with the efficiency and scalability of complex events processing. So with one query, you can uh, query both the stream and multiple databases. One downside of semantic complex event processing is that often shows an increase of on processing time due to the insertion of the knowledge base within the stream processing. So, in order to give you a grasp of the semantic SIP state of art, we have to talk about other two research parts that are closely related. The first one is stream reasoning. Uh, what distinguishes the stream reasoning from semantic CP is that stream reasoning uh, focus less on efficiency and scalability and semantic CP tends to have a more distributed, distributed point of view. Uh, we also have a RDF stream processors, which are also stream reasoning engines, but the RDF stream processors, they extend Sparkle which is the RDF query language. These are some examples of RSP engines. These first four here are all RSP engines, and this last one here is one example of semantic CP engine. As you can see, most of the engines does not support representing an event of the stream using RDF graphs, and uh, all RSPs are, they are all standalone processing engines, they were main designed for main memory processing and offer little or no support for distributed decentralized processing. With that in mind, we have two main goals with DSC. The first one is to allow the encapsulation of RCP engines into satellite operators and permit that these operators can be interconnected in a distributed operator network. And the second goal is to uh, approximate this RSP agents to work uh, accordingly the processing model of semantic SIP. We have three research contributions. The first is that we propose here uh, in this work a conceptual architecture for the centralized semantic SIP. Uh, the second is implementation for this conceptual architecture. And the third is a uh, evaluation that we did with our implementation uh, of that we call the SCP. So our conceptual architecture has three main modules. The first module is the operator model. This is the processing element of the network. It receives an RDF stream and output them generating uh, resulting streams. Uh, the second model is the client model, which is the delivers the events to end users. And we have the third model here, which is the stream generator. It will generate new RDF streams and publish them into the infrastructure. Uh, it is important to say that in our concept of architecture, we can represent events on the stream by using RDF triples or RDF graph. For the implementation, we wrote the code in Java, and we also use Apache Kafka as the communication for the communication between our, our modules. 
So every model here will use a publish subscribe button to communicate with each other. Uh, we implemented two forms of representing one event on the stream. Uh, one of the forms is by using an RDF triple format, and the other form of representing one event on the stream is by using an RDF graph. We have prepared two different experiments for this implementation. The first experiment is more focused on uh, comparing the processing time of a single and complex query, running it monotonically, with dividing the same query into six smaller queries. Uh, and these six smaller queries will be run on parallel using our infrastructure. Uh, the second experiment is more focused on measuring the impact of varying the total knowledge base size versus the search base size. Uh, our data stream is uh, built with Twitskeeby, and this is a dataset containing annotated tweets, and each of these tweets have an entity that exists on the Wikipedia. So the Wikipedia will be our background knowledge. The query objective here is to build a new RDF graph containing all tweets from the input stream that mentions either a musical artist or a TV show and also some aggregated statistics. Okay, we prepared two different methods to access the knowledge base. The first one is the KV from method, and this method is for the operator to access the knowledge base locally on it. So we previously downloaded the part of the knowledge base for the operator, so the operator can query it locally. And the second method of accessing the knowledge base is by exposing a Spark or endpoint. So it's a centralized knowledge base this time, and our operators will query this centralized knowledge base through the Spark or endpoint. In this period one, we, ha we have on the left side here the monotonically version of the query, and here is the distributed version of the query on the right. Uh, this is the same query with the same results, but on the right, as you can see here, there is an operator network, and we managed to parallelize some of, of part, some parts of this monotonically query here. Uh, it's important to say that each operator on the network on our tests, uh, we run it through a Docker container, so each operator is a different Docker container. So in this primit one, we have here the results. Uh, on the left side of table one is the monotonically version of the query, and on the right side is the distributed version. As you can see here, we managed to reduce uh, from um, 117 seconds to 84.6 seconds uh, when the, each operator are accessing the knowledge base locally. And when we centralize the knowledge base and our operators are accessing it through this particular endpoint, we manage to reduce uh, from 104.3 seconds to 81.3 seconds. This is the processing time per window. Is average per time per window. This is experiment two. Uh, so the first part of the experiment two, uh, as expected, when we reduce the search space, uh, we also have a decrease on the processing time. Uh, so we can see here on the yellow boxes. And I think the most interesting part of the experiment two is presented by this blue box here. Uh, in this case here, we uh, fixed the search space, so this is the same search space for both uh, for for this both both of these tests. But in the second test, we get rid of all the noise of the knowledge base. So here on the first test, uh, it, it was with all the triples on the knowledge base, even even if with the triples that were not interested for the query. And then, when we get rid of the noise of the knowledge base, we manage to decrease the processing time from 11.1 seconds to 8.5 seconds per window. So, this is the related works. 
Uh, we have some interesting works here. Uh, we first mentioned SQL Cloud, which is the first RSP engines to provide parallelization for one query. So with one query, we can parallelize it. The difference between this uh, work from the ICP is that the ICP can work with multiple queries and interconnect them. Uh, the second work here is Albemont's infrastructure. This is a very uh, good work. It can integrate different R RSP engines uh, to make them talk with each other. Uh, one difference between this infrastructure from our is that uh, Albemont's infrastructure uh, the operator have to access the knowledge base locally. And the other difference is that our infrastructure aims to provide some extra filters to RSP engines to help them to work accordingly, accordingly at the semantic complex event processing model. Uh, the other two works here they are from the same author, and BigSR is an evolution of Strider. Uh, they both have its own query language. Uh, one difference between our work is that uh, they both they can only access uh, they cannot access external knowledge bases at least on query level. So they it makes these two works not suitable for semantic complex event processing. As future work, uh, we are planning and we are as we already started it to implement uh, experiment one, just do experiment one with Cobimont infrastructure, compare its results to the SIP. And the other future work that we are developing uh, knowledge base support inside the DSIP. So when the developer writes some code to process its own data streams, uh, the, the developer could use some help with the internal knowledge base of the SCP. That's all for now. Thank you. Questions?